All right, so today we're gonna to talk about Bootstrap. I have not posted this online or the uh, the scripts online just because as I was going through it, there's there's a lot of changes I wanted to make, so and I haven't gone through and made those changes yet. So I'll do a little bit of mi a little mix of kind of this chalkboard stuff and our, our slides. Okay, so today we're talking about Bootstrap, and the term bootstrapping it comes from that that phrase to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Okay, and origins of that phrase are disputed. One theory is that it came from a German folktale where the hero was stuck in a swamp and to get himself out he pulled himself up by his bootstraps. Okay, and that's that's of course uh, an absurd and ridiculous thing to do, but if you're a folk hero you can do stuff like that. Um, and as far as statistics goes, bootstrapping is it's a resampling method where you know we can test hypotheses or make conclusions about the population without the need for additional data. It seems like we're trying to do almost an impossible thing, almost, you know, how can we make conclusions about the population if all we have is a sample and we're gonna just play around with the sample, okay? And, you know, we're not gonna try to prove the mathematics behind bootstrapping. Uh, there have been studies into this and it's been shown that it is, it's a reasonable thing to do with bootstrapping. It's kind of just this take what you've got and do the best you can do with it. Okay, Kind of this idea of pull, pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. Just take the data you have and do the best thing you, that you can do with it. Uh, we'll take a look at parametric and non-parametric bootstrap. There's a, there's a little bit of a, a difference there. Okay. On Monday we talked about randomization tests and we said that you can use randomization tests if the data is coming from an experiment where random assignment was used. Okay, so if random assignment was used, you can do randomization tests. In today's case, when we're talking about bootstrapping, this applies when random sampling was used. Okay, so there's a, there's a key distinction there, random sampling versus random assignment. If you've used random assignment for your data, you can do a randomization test. If you use random sampling to obtain your data, you can do bootstrap, okay? And in both cases, they're similar in that we are using the computer to simulate the random randomizing process or just random chance as the source of the variation in our data, okay? Because we know that because of randomness, we will get variations in our data and here the computer is simulating that, you know, thousands of times to give us an idea of the amount of variation that does appear from random chance alone. Okay, and bootstrap and randomization tests both, both take a stab at that. Uh, the key difference really is that um, in randomization tests we do sampling without replacement, we're just shuffling those items around, and in bootstrap we do sampling with replacement. Now I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that uh, in a moment. Okay. For our, this is a wall of text here. Uh, this is just coming straight from uh, the textbook. The, uh, the data set that we're looking at is uh, a Latino, Latino American uh, education achievement or attainment. Um, they're looking at, uh, at immigrants from Latin American countries and uh, and that includes Mexico, but also a bunch of other countries, all right? And the researchers were curious if, um, you know, when, when people come to uh, the U.S., uh, you know, some of them go to school and, or go to college and, and different things, and they were curious if there was a difference between the amount of education attainment or achievement between uh, immigrants coming from Mexico versus other countries in Latin America, okay? And that's, that's the question that the, uh, the researchers asked. And so they took some, uh, some year 2000 census data, okay? And, uh, and we have a, you know, a sample of 150 people, some coming from Mexico, some coming from the other Latin American countries. And uh, we're looking at the, uh, the education uh, achievement there. And we wanna know, is there, is there a link between, between those things or not? 
Okay, and of course, because these are observational studies, we cannot draw any kind of cause and effect conclusion. All we can just say is there seems to be uh, a link or a difference, um, but we don't know why, and it's just, you know, looking at this sample, okay? So when we take a look at our data set, we're going to see it's coming from the year 2000 census data. These are, we're looking at 150 uh, Latino immigrants living in Los Angeles, all right? And the researchers somehow, they came up with some kind of educational achievement level and this ranges from 1 to 100, where higher values indicate higher levels of educational achievement. And, and it doesn't give us much more detail than that. So we don't, know, we don't know what this means. I'm assuming if you got your PhD or you went to med school, you would be very close to 100. And then if you did not go to grade school or something, then you would be close to the one, but I don't. You know, I have no idea where grad, high school graduation would put you on the scale. That doesn't. They didn't give us any more details, but apparently they use some kind of scale across everybody, and they've put put numbers on there. All right, and then, uh, and then there's an immigrant year and an immigrant age. This is the age of the person at the time of immigration, and this is the year at which the uh, the person arrived in the U.S. rounded to the nearest tenth. Okay. And then we have two questions. Uh, is the individual fluent in English? Zero for no, one for yes. And did the individual immigrate from Mexico? Zero for no if they're not from Mexico, one if they are from Mexico. Okay. And really what we're just curious of is, is there a relationship between achievement, the education achievement level, and whether the immigrant is from Mexico or not? Okay, that's the, uh, that's the question that the researchers have. Okay, so we can, we can take a quick look. Um, this data set uh, I've linked to on CCLE, or not the data set directly, but in CCLE there's a link to the book website, and the book website contains uh, the data files and things like that. So you can you can download it that way, um, and so we can uh, we can just load this up. We can do a read.csv for Latino uh, education. Okay. And we can take a look at the uh, the head here, and uh, and we've got the achievement level, you know, on a scale from one to a hundred, and then uh, you know whether they are from Mexico or not. So we can just do a quick, just a quick thing. We can do a Latino dollar sign Mexico, and just see how many how many people came from Mexico. So we have 116 coming from Mexico. And um, uh, we can just see how many are not from Mexico. There's 34 that were not from Mexico. Okay. And we can kind of just get the uh, the mean achievement. And so I'll just I'm gonna just run Deplier to do this, and I'm gonna do uh, just a very quick Latino group by. Um, Mexico and uh, and then we'll do summarize mean is going to be mean of achievement and uh, standard deviation will be standard deviation of achievement okay so we run that all right and we see for those coming from Mexico the mean achievement is 58.59 those who did not come from Mexico, the mean achievement is 64.5. Okay, so there, there we observe a difference, all right, in our sample of 116 versus 34. And then, so the question is, is this difference significant or not significant? Okay, and we look at the standard deviation. We see that the standard deviation for those not from Mexico is a little bit smaller than those coming from Mexico. So if we can make a statement about the spread or hom homogeneity, it seems those coming not from Mexico display a little bit less spread in um, at least educational achievement. And, and of course, in statistics, we're always asking, are these differences significant or, or not significant? Okay. All right. And so, uh, you know, we can also take a look at a few um, just graphs to give us a better picture of what the data shows. Okay. 
So I can just do a box plot, and uh, and you can do achievement, um, you know, as a as a formula based on whether someone is from Mexico or not. Okay, and we'll do uh, horizontal equals true, data being um, our Latino education data set. Okay, and so we see this is the median achievement level for you know at least in our sample those coming from Mexico versus those who did not come from Mexico and this is what we have okay so it's important to note that we only had 34 people in the uh, not from Mexico group and 116 people from the Mexico group okay so this isn't a very huge sample to begin with and you know we're just we're asking you know is there a difference and and these are you know These are questions that, that we have, okay? Um, we can also plot densities, okay? Um, if you look at the code, so some of this code I'm taking from the web, uh, from the textbook. I'm also using ggplot for this, okay? So for ggplot, let me just kind of show you the, um, the commands I'm using. I'm taking the data set Latino and I'm doing an aesthetic mapping, okay? Because I, what I want to do is a density, uh, I'm not going to map the achievement to a, uh, an aesthetic attribute, but I will say this is the aesthetic I want to, to, to draw, okay? And we will set uh, one of the aesthetics to be the color and the fill, okay, of our, of our chart, okay? And the way... Uh, Mexico, or uh, whether the person is from Mexico or not, is stored. Is currently it's stored as an integer, so we have to turn this into a factor. So uh, ggplot knows to treat it not as a numeric value, but as a as a factor, as a category. Okay, and then we're going to add uh, geometry density, so we get uh, a density plot, and then alpha here is just to uh, to change the coloring. Okay, so I'll just plot that right here, and so this is. This is our density plot. So the orange or the coral is for not coming from Mexico, okay? And this is kind of the, uh, the plot that we have. And those coming from Mexico, this is the, uh, the spread, okay? So it's, it's, it's hard to say, <laughs> right? Okay. Okay, we could uh, also, so, you know, that's just kind of, yeah, I don't know what I did there. All right. So if we were to use a traditional analysis method to compare the mean education achievement levels uh, from our data set, we could just do a plain old t-test from back in the day, right? So we would do t-test. You know, we're looking at achievement as based um, as explained by whether someone is from Mexico or not. And, uh, and our data is coming uh, for Latino, the Latino data set. Okay, so this is what a plain old t-test spits out. Okay, and it says, you know, this is what you have, your p-value is this, and, uh, and this is what we have, right? So this is our, these were our group means and things like that. What are the assumptions that we're making when we do a t-test? Okay. Hmm? Uh, yeah. Population variance, yeah, is unknown, but the, that the population variances are the same for, for those. Um, there's kind of an assumption that the distribution of, of the X bar for each group is normal. Okay, that's, a, that's also an assumption that's coming there, which the st central limit theorem says is true as long as your sample sizes are large enough. And, and the rule of thumb is that if it's over 30, then the sample sizes are large enough. So maybe that's OK. Um, who knows, right? But yeah, we are, we are assuming that kind of the, uh, you know, we are making some assumptions about going into there. OK. One thing we can do is we can do what we call parametric 
bootstrap. No, I guess I didn't. I guess it didn't update there. Um, okay, and so with parametric bootstrap, you know we're going to write out. We're we're still testing the uh, the hypothesis that population one mu one is equal to mu two, right? So we can just say population one would be immigrants from Mexico, and population two will be uh, not from Mexico. And so with parametric bootstrap, we want to know, you know, are these two things uh, equal or are they or are they different? Okay. And so if the null hypothesis were true, okay, then technically all of our data would come from some uh, normal distribution with mean, mu, and sigma, right? So we have all of our data being 150 data points, OK? So both those coming from Mexico and those not coming from Mexico would come from here, right? So we could ask, you know, um, what we can do with parametric bootstrap is we define this parent population, right? Okay. <coughs> and we just take random samples from it, okay? So we take We take a random sample from the distribution. And then we just put 116 in one group and 34 in the other group, OK? So we put 116 values in group 1 and 34 in group 2. Okay, We calculate the group means and take the difference. And we repeat this over and over again. Okay. And at the end, we just see how many times we ended up getting a difference from our random samples that are as great as or larger than the difference that we observed in our um, in our data. Okay. observed difference. OK, so d does that process make s sense? So we are using the computer's ability to simulate 
random draws from a defined distribution. And we're going to draw 150 of these things. We're going to put basically 116 in one, 34 in another. Okay, Or you could just say we're going to draw 116 for group one, draw 34 for group two. And then we calculate the group means. We compare those. And we can, and of course, they're not going to be equal, or not necessarily equal. And, but we can get an idea of how often do we get an observed difference of, you know, between, um, what did we, where is this? OK, you know. 64.5 versus 58.6, 64.5, if I just wanted to know whatever difference here I have, 64.5 minus 58.6, approximately a difference of 5.9, we can see, you know, how often do we get a difference of 5.9, okay? And, and there's a few, a few approaches to this. Um, our textbook recommends standardizing all of our data first meaning that we're going to be drawing from a normal 0, 1, OK? And then the other option is to get kind of the, uh, the overall mean and then the overall standard deviation from our data and use that as a stand-in for what the population mean and population standard deviation are, OK? So I mean, in, in either case, we're kind of just fiddling a, a little bit around. The, the thing about parametric bootstrap is that this is the strong assumption that you are making, OK? When you're doing parametric bootstrap, you are making assumption about the, the distribution of the population from where your data is coming, OK? And if that assumption about the distribution where the population is coming from, if that is wrong, then you cannot hope for your parametric bootstrap results to be right either, OK? But a lot of times we're, we're kind of assuming something is a little bit normal at some degree, and so, so that's what we're doing, OK? So this is um, the, uh, the strong assumption that you, we are making in parametric bootstrap. And that is the population has a specified distribution. OK, so let's, let's just kind of fiddle around with this and just see what happens, OK? So actually, let's. So I have, um, so I can take just, I can get the, uh, the mean in our entire data set and the standard deviation of our entire data set. OK? And I can use this to define a new random normal, right? So in, in R, we can draw values from the random normal by just doing R norm, right? And then so we could say, I want 150 values from our norm where the mean is equal and the standard deviation is equal to what I'm getting from my data. OK, so this would generate 150 values coming from a random normal distribution where the mean According to R, the mean is the same as the mean in my data, and the standard deviation is the same as the standard deviation in my data. Okay, so that's what we're doing. And so I could just say this will be kind of my like my um, random sample will be this, and we can just say group one will be from our random sample the uh, first 116. And group two will be from our random sample the remaining, um, oops, 
So I'm pretty sure this is length of group two. There should be 34, right? Okay. So that's what we have. And now we can just say, okay, what's the mean of group one? And what's the uh, mean of group two? Okay, and we can ask, what's the difference between the mean of group, or no, it's not, I don't write that. I just do mean of group one minus mean of group two. Okay, and so in this case, we got a difference of 1.23, okay? And we can do this over and over and over again, and we can see, well, how often, because uh, in our data, um, uh, where? This is, um, this is the mean for Mexico, and this is the mean for non-Mexico. So we could ask, you know, what's the, uh, Maybe, um, what's our current mean for Mexico? And so we'll do Mexico and this will be none. Okay, so we can do that. And then so our current difference, observed difference will be be that. And so what is my observed difference? The exact observed difference I have is negative 5.9. Okay. So anyway, we can do this and we can say uh, we're going to take our difference and store this as the uh, difference between group one minus, I'm sorry, mean of group one and the mean of group two. Okay, and so let's just build a loop here. We'll do differences will be a vector. We'll do we'll put five thousand in here, okay? And we'll do for i and one through five thousand. We're gonna just run this run all of this. And we'll store this as differences. Okay. Oh, you just you just highlight it and then you just hit tab. Yeah, and then uh, you can comment everything out by holding Control Shift C, right? So, how did I do that? Uh, control or uh, I think Control Shift C on your keyboard or Command Shift C. So, you, if you want to comment out a group of code, is that amazing? Okay. <laughs> Just our studio, right? This is this is this is why we do art things in our studio and not just vanilla R. So, okay. So you have that, and then um, and then we'll run this thing. Okay, and let's take a look. Okay, so we'll take a look at uh, we'll do summary of difference. And, uh, and most of the time, we're getting uh, a difference of around 0, which is exactly what we'd expect. OK? And, uh, and the question is, um, you know, our observed difference, how much was our observed difference again? It was you know, 5.9. We want to know um, how often is the summary of our observed difference greater than 5.9, right? So actually, I should probably make it. Uh, positive, my observed difference will do the absolute value here. Okay, and then so we're going to just ask, uh, not summary difference, so we'll say, uh, is the difference uh, greater, greater than or equal to the observed difference, oh, and the absolute value of that. So this will be a vector of trues and falses, right? Five thousand of them. Okay. So we don't want we don't want that. We just want the mean of this. How often do we get? Did this happen? Okay. So this happened about four point six percent of the time, according to to this. D does that make sense? So according to parametric bootstrap, okay, where uh, 
the assumption that the the strong assumption that we're making in parametric bootstrap is that the parent population is has a normal distribution okay and we are defining the normal distribution using okay what we what we use here is the overall x bar and the overall sd okay so we use that as as the way to generate new values from our random distribution okay yes All right, okay, so, so we ask, you know, right, what's the definition of a p-value? The definition of the p-value is the probability of getting, probability of observing our data, or in this case, because we're talking about a difference, so we'll say observing a sample difference, you know, as large uh, as, you know, our data is, if we assume that the null hypothesis is true. Okay? And so what we're doing is we're we're running simulations of the null hypothesis being true. Okay? And in this case the null hypothesis being true means all of our data is coming from one distribution. And to get an and to pretend like we know what that distribution is, we're going to use the mean from, uh, from our data set and the standard deviation from our data set. Okay? We're just using those in as kind of plugins uh, or current best guesses for what the mean of the population is and what the mean of the standard deviation is. I mean, the standard deviation of the population is. Okay? So we use that, and we use that to generate our, um, our difference here. Okay? So this is kind of a, an approximate p-value. This tells us, you know, if I did this by random chance, how often did I get a difference as big as the observed difference I have or greater? Okay? So that's, that's what this is telling me. Okay? This is an, a, a way to approximate the p-value. Okay? And so we're getting a p-value just slightly under 5%. Okay? So this is, it's not like super strong evidence that there's a, that there's a difference, but it's, it's a moderate amount of evidence here. Okay? And notice it is different from what we got when we did the t-test. The t-test put some stronger assumptions on um, it. The t-test put stronger assumptions on the distributions of our data and things of that nature, and so we're getting a, uh, a you know slightly smaller p-value here. Okay, but here this is a. This is what we're getting when we do parametric bootstrap. All right, is that all right? OK. So that is parametric bootstrap. That puts a very strong assumption about the nature of the population distribution. OK? If you have a suspicion or if you have reason to believe that the population has a different distribution, you can use a different distribution. OK? But here we are making the strong assumption that the population has some defined parametric distribution. Parametric distribution meaning a distribution defined by parameters like mu and sigma. Okay? There's the beta distributions, gamma distributions, Weibull distributions, Poisson, you know, all of these other distributions exist. We are making assumptions saying that our data is coming from some known definable distribution. Okay? Maybe we don't want to do that. Okay? And on the other hand, we have non-parametric bootstrap. Okay? And so and with non-parametric bootstrap, we do not put an assumption about about the form or shape of the parent distribution. Okay, so we're not going to say that the parent distribution is normal or anything like that. Okay? 
the and this is the key part for non-parametric bootstrap is that we assume that our random sample okay and and this is a reasonable assumption is that you know, okay we're assuming that our data is a random sample and so if you did random sampling to get your data this is what we're doing we're assuming that our data is a random sample and because it's a random sample according to the laws of probability overall your sample should be somewhat representative of the parent population okay it is a random sample so your data should be representative of the population, OK? And so with non-parametric bootstrap, the way we do this is comparing this to parametric bootstrap, where we are assuming all of our data is coming from here. We've got, you know, we have our pool of, this is our data of 150 points. OK, so you just imagine little data in our pool here. Okay. We're assuming that all of this is came from this uh, uh, if the null hypothesis is true, okay? If the null hypothesis is true, then this means all of this data came from some population, right? So you have some undefined population that we don't know about. We're saying all of this came from there. Okay? And so what we can do is we can take our data of 150 points and we can draw random samples with replacement, OK? So ideally, we wish we could sample from the population, but we don't have access to that. So what we do is we will, from here, we draw random samples. with replacement, OK? So a data of 150 points, we're going to draw a random sample of 150 data points from here, OK? OK, you do it with replacement. And then you split, you know, 116 into group 1 and 34 into group 2. Okay? And then you do the same thing. You find the mean of this group and you find the mean of this group and then you compare how often and then you uh, you know, find the mean, calculate the means. And then, you know, calculate the difference between these two means. Calculate the mean, calculate the mean, OK. Find the difference OK, so we find the difference between these two means. And then we're going to see how often do these randomized differences end up greater than our observed difference? Okay, and this seems this feels very bizarre. Okay, but mathematically it works out in that what we're doing is we we're using our sample of 150 data points as a pretend population. Okay, but to kind of make it an infinite population, right? The population is supposed to be this huge thing. We're going to replace. We're going to sample with replacement. Okay, so it's like we're taking our data set of 150 data points. Okay, and then we're like making uh, you know a million copies of this thing, and this is going to be now a stand-in for the population. And and then and then we're drawing from that. 
okay? Because normally, you know, we would just draw from the population, okay? So with non-parametric bootstrap, drawing with replacement is basically making, you know, infinite copies of this data set and then drawing from that, okay? So we're, we're basically multiplying this so it, it acts like a huge population, and that's what drawing with replacement does. Yes? How would you want to ever draw, like, more than the original how many points that we got from the population? I'm trying to think what the implications of that would be. Um, generally, what you, so I'm not sure. I'm trying to think why you would want to do that. So because, again, the idea is we're trying to get an idea of how often we get the differences that we observed, right? So the difference we observed is coming from one group of 116 and another group of 34. And so we want to simulate those conditions, okay? And that's why we keep doing 150, putting 116 in one group and 34 in the other group. I'm trying to think if there's ever a situation where you're not trying to replicate where you're getting your data, and I can't think of, think of that off the top of my head. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, before I run out of time here, and, and we'll, we'll cover this again on Monday, um, we're going to start off with our uh, population uh, Latino. So, so we'll just, so we'll do a Latino dollar sign achieve. Okay. And then, so we'll just set this as our, you know, pretend population is, is really what it is, okay? So we create our pretend population here, which is just our data, and then we're going to sample uh, from pretend population uh, 150 points, and we do replace equals true, okay? So, whoops. So we do this. This is just drawing from, from this, okay? And then now that we've sampled this, so this is now our uh, random sample, so basically, this is, we're going to do this exact same thing here, okay? We put 116 into group 1, 116, uh, 34 in group 2, so we, we do this, and then we calculate our difference, okay? And so I'm just going to wrap this into, into here, and, uh, and then we'll reset my... my difference vector here, okay? So let me just write this here. Non-parametric. Okay, so again, with non-parametric bootstrap, we're not making any assumptions about the population. We're just assuming, or we're just taking into account that the fact that our sample was random, a random sample, therefore, it, it should be representative of the population, okay? So this is now our pretend po our our, our data is going to serve as our pretend population. We run through this, okay, and we get this, and then we can, we can ask for a summary of the difference. Same thing here, okay, and we're getting that, and we can ask how often did we get differences as large as the one we observed, and this happened a little bit less with a, with a probability of around 4%, okay? And so, so in both cases, we're still getting um, you know, a difference around, uh, you know, the, the difference that we observe doesn't happen all that often. It happens a little bit less than 5%, but it's not overwhelmingly uh, small compared to, uh, to what we drew, okay? And, uh, and this is the idea of bootstrapping. So parametric, you're putting assumptions about the population. Non-parametric, we're just assuming that because it was a random sample, it has to be somewhat representative of the population, okay? And these, again, these methods only work in cases where your data was obtained via random sample, okay? Random assignment, you're going to use a randomization test. Random sampling, you can use bootstrap. Okay, so we'll end there. Have a happy Thanksgiving. We'll see you guys on Monday. Um, drive home safely, uh, wherever that may be.